hand first for highlights. Wake up for the government marks 16 days of activism to end violence against women, girls. For the government eyes, 200 billion hydrogen economy to reduce carbon emissions. On the following scene, thousands of people return home to South Lebanon as Israel Hezbollah ceasefire deal takes effect. And in sport, Nigeria maintains dominance in cricket World Cup qualifiers in Abuja. Now the details are um, daily and gradual. The Lake of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, WAPA, has reaffirmed its commitment to eradicating gender-based violence. Speaking at a sensitization walk to mark the commencement of the global 16 days of activism to end violence against women and girls, Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Cecilia Dada, highlighted the urgent need for collective action in addressing violence against women and girls. Dada described gender-based violence as one of the most pervasive yet underreported human rights violations globally and stressed the importance of the campaign's theme, Unite to End Violence Against Women and Girls. She noted that the League of State Government, through WAPA, has implemented a series of strategic interventions aimed at addressing the root causes and consequences of violence. The Commissioner listed ways to include strengthening legal frameworks in collaboration with stakeholders to enforce laws such as the Domestic Violence Protection Law, providing financial independence to women through tuition-free skills acquisition centers, and promoting awareness through community sensitization campaigns and advocacy initiatives. The League of State Planning and Environmental Monitoring Authority, Las Pema, has deepened its commitment to sustainable urban development through active stakeholder engagement in its ongoing transformation of incidental urban spaces across the state. As part of the project, Las Pema is repurposing neglected or underutilized spaces into recreational parks community gardens and eco-friendly zones, ensuring that residents and stakeholders play pivotal roles in the process. Speaking at a stakeholders forum in Ikorodu to deliberate on the transformation project of incidental urban space, Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Oluyinka Olumide, said the in initiative reflects the administration of Governor Bajide Sanwolo's dedication to fostering collaboration and inclusivity in the drive for a more livable Lagos. Olumide emphasized the importance of collaboration in achieving the project's objectives, noting that involving local communities from the inception stage will be instrumental in ensuring that the transformed spaces reflect the needs and aspirations of residents. It is addressed the general manager of Las Pema, Daisy Oshaw, stating that the incidental open spaces at Sabo Ikorodu are currently constituting an environmental nuisance, with the spaces being a hideout for criminal elements to carry out their activities. Or should say the state government is ready to transform the spaces into a more conducive environment for relaxation and business, stating that this is a testament to the government's resolve to address urban challenges through innovative solutions. He appeals to the resident to take ownership of the project and cooperate with the agency to ensure that the project is achieved within the stipulated time frame. The Nigeria Christian Pilgrims Commission, NCPC, will commence the airlift of intending pilgrims to the Holy Land on December 22. Executive Secretary of the NCPC, Stephen Adegbise, made the announcement during a meeting of the Conference of States comprising States Chairman and Secretaries of Christian Pilgrims Welfare Boards and FCT in Abuja. Adegbite, who said the meeting was to deliberate on moving the Commission forward, charged the Conference of States members to look up to God and urged them to serve the people. The NCPC boss reiterated his stance on zero abscondment of pilgrims and corruption policy. Now to the rest of the stories, the federal government has outlined a plan to attract significant investments in infrastructure upgrades 
with the goal of tapping into the global hydrogen economy that is forecast to hit $200 billion by 2030. The Government Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Nicholas Ella, said integrating hydrogen into the nation's energy ecosystem can significantly contribute to achieving the nation's target of reducing carbon emissions by 20% by 2030. This was as Vice President Kashim Shatima noted that building human capital in hydrogen technologies is critical to the viability of a hydrogen economy in the country. The strategic call to begin the adoption of hydrogen as an alternative power source was highlighted at the first national conference on hydrogen in Abuja, organized by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the Foundation for Sustainable Social Responsibility in Emerging Africa, themed Building a Hydrogen Economy for Nigeria. The Vice President, who was represented by the Special Advisor to the President on Power Infrastructure in the Office of the VP, Sadiq Bonka, said developing pilot programs across different applications is a key step in building in-country expertise to tap into the vast global hydrogen economy. Shitima said that regional collaboration with other countries in the sub-region and the continent on the adoption of hydrogen would support its viability domestically. Chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, Kadena Polytechnic Chapter, Obakar Abdullahi, says the tuition will sh or said the union will shut down all polytechnics nationwide by December 2 due to the federal government's failure to meet its members' demands. According to Abdullahi, the union leadership issued a 15-day ultimatum to the federal government on October 6, outlining pressing demands aimed at resolving the systemic challenges that hindered the progress of polytechnics but the government had failed to address the issues. Abdullahi listed some of the demands to include swift release of the second tranche of the Needs Assessment Intervention Fund, immediate implementation of the approved 25 to 35 percent salary review across all public polytechnics, and the payment of accrued arrears. Other demands are the release and final resolution of the decade long arrears of Contest 15 migration for Lower Kedah the release of outstanding promotion arrears, addressing inadequate funding and resolving the issue of unpaid allowances. On July, I found that the survival and quality of the educational system hinged upon the government's responsiveness, adding that the union believes that a strong education sector is vital for the future of the nation and cannot afford to compromise on these issues any longer. Tinobu will today depart Abuja for France for a three-day state visit. Tinobu's special advisor on information and strategy, Bayo Onomuka, in a statement said the visit is in honor of an invitation from President Manuel Macron. In the statement titled, President Tinobu honors invitation for a state visit to France, Onanuka said the president's three-day visit, which will focus on strengthening political, economic, and cultural relations and establishing more opportunities for partnership, particularly in agriculture, security, education, health, youth engagement and employment, innovation, and energy transition, promises significant benefits for Nigeria. Said President Tinubu and his wife, Onuwa Mitinubu, will be received on Thursday at the 350-year-old French Military Museum, Le Invalide and Palais de la Lise, by Macron and his spouse, Brigitte, for initial ceremonies that will dovetail into bilateral meetings. So foreign news, a ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah is in effect in Lebanon after a deal to end 13 months of fighting began this morning. Thousands of Lebanese civilians have started returning to their homes in the south, but Israel knows it is not yet safe to return to certain areas. The Lebanese army is preparing to deploy an unexpected 5,000 troops to the south as part of the deal which was announced by U.S. President Joe Biden. 
Israeli troops began a land invasion of Lebanon almost two months ago in response to almost a year of rocket attacks from Hezbollah. The ceasefire in Lebanon will not directly affect Israel's war in Gaza. In our sport, Nigeria's Miro senior cricket team, the Yellow Greens, needed three wins in three matches at the 2026 ICC World Cup Africa Sub Regional Qualifier C, defeating a hard fighting Swatini by five wickets at the NCF Oval 2 of the Mashud Abdullah National Stadium, Abuja. The win keeps Nigeria at the top table with six points and a pole position for one of the two spots in the final phase of the qualifiers. Meanwhile, Botswana kept up the chase behind Nigeria after winning their third game of the series with a dominant 10-wicket win over Cote d'Ivoire. Sierra Leone also moved up to four points to stay third and contend for a place as well after beating St. Helena by four wickets. And that is on his attend just a phone call, slow down at road junctions, intersections and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 961 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sunwell administration rescued 48,000 households from poverty through various social intervention programs under which women got cash transfers and acquired skills? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, try the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, WAPA, has reaffirmed its commitment to eradicating gender-based violence. The federal government has outlined a plan to attract significant investments in infrastructure upgrades with the goal of tapping into the global hydrogen economy that is forecast to hit $200 billion by 2030. I also told you that a ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah is in effect in Lebanon after a deal to end 13 months of fighting began this morning. And in sports, Nigeria's male senior cricket team, the Yellow Greens, made it three wins in three matches at the 2026 ICC World Cup Africa Sub Regional Qualifier C, defeating a hard fighting Eswatini by five wickets at the NCF Oval 2 of the Moshud Abdullah National Stadium, Abuja. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. The latest news broadcast compiled by Abiola Fabulagu and Dili Agadumo. Good morning. Thank you for listening.